I grew up actually in western Michigan and my, uh, my parents were hog farmers. And of course living on the farm you had this uh, immediate realization of uh, the connectivity of everything, this life cycle. It's basically you, you learn about sex and death right off the bat. And uh, growing up in this farmhouse full of these objects, I actually learned my family history, not so much through photographs, but really through the objects that we lived with. What actually motivated me to uh, investigate metals um, was we had a Russian samovar in our home. And uh, it was this object that propelled me to study Russian studies in college. But the root of it was that there was this whole web of stories about the object and how the object came into our family history. And so after struggling with Russian languages for more years than I care to admit, I finally decided to really sort of think about the object itself and I went into metalsmithing. My interest, of course, was hollowware and how the idea of um, hollowware objects like uh, ceremonial tea sets or, or very, very simple domestic porgers or a silver beaker carries not only um, utilitarian value, the, the idea of its function, but it certainly carries a wealth of historical and cultural information as well. And that made so much sense that my work actually shifted away from functional work to completely non-functional pieces that focused more specifically um, on this sort of grid work, this skeletal map of these objects. And I intended it to be the sort of iconic description of an object. Embellishing these pieces are these very labor-intensive kind of ornaments. And sometimes they're botanical, um, sometimes they're more geometrical or structural, but they're all an attempt to add to this, to, to add the emotive, to add the sensual back to this sort of intellectual description of the form. I have this piece called Kept, and it's about a six-foot vessel. Um, it's, it's, it's a structural steel, and it's lined, literally, with 24 dozen blown eggs. So it's this, this large sort of vase form, and the volume of it is sort of revealed through these these egg forms and it sits on um, about an eight foot long runner which is actually all made out of welded steel. And so the work um, begins in non-ferrous or ferrous metals but is always complemented by this sort of rich tapestry of very evocative sensory materials. So when I'm planning a piece generally it's motivated by some sort of conceptual intention. So I'll begin with a sketch and that sketch literally becomes um, a, a road map for the piece. I'll actually bend um, I usually work with steel stock, although I am working now with bronze too. I'll actually bend ribs for the vessel form right off the drawing that I've made. And then they get welded into a structure that is uh, just these kind of lines that describe the form. And then little pieces of wire get welded in all the way around, so it's a smooth skin that describes the exterior of the form. Um, many people argue that metalsmithing is like this cul-de-sac. It's like very rich with history, uh, rich with process and technical information. It's like we're, we're rooted in this history of utilitarian objects. And, and must we go on and maintain that? Or can we actually take this little cul-de-sac of metals with all this history and all this process and all this material and see how it can actually make meaningful work in a contemporary setting? And that's my mission. And I feel like that's kind of what this department's about, carrying the future into the, or carrying the past into the future.